Hello, best friends. Uh, we're all here together for the homework seven introduction video and it's covering sorting. So let's just jump into it. Um, an overview of what this homework is going to look like. So first we have mysortingalgorithms.java. And this one is basically just about um, implementing e selection sort, insertion sort, merge sort, and LSE radix sort. So that's um, five total sorts. And then optionally, you can do some more ones with heap sort, quick sort, and MSC radix if you are just that into sorting and love it so much like I do. Um, and there are also some optional questions to deepen your conceptual understanding, just like in the spec, you know, so you can go through and think about those, <clears throat> but there's nothing like you have to turn in regarding those questions. So it's just doing the five sorts bolded here um, in the mysortingalgorithms.java file. So that's the first part. Then the second part is you just have to pick one of the four provided interesting problems to solve. And so there are just like four different sort of like puzzle type, um, almost interview-like problems that you can solve. And each one can be completed using sorting or sorting principles. Um, like they're very ten, like closely related to the concepts that we use in sorting or like sorting the list maybe like helps you solve the problem. And so they're just really interesting and they're actually really common interview questions. So any of y'all, I don't know, grinding elite code, whatever they'd say, um, this could be a fun exercise for you. And so you only have to do one of the four. And then lastly, um, there are some optional interesting questions that relate insertion into a binary search tree to quick sort. And so I think this is a really cool thing to think about if you are curious about it. So we can talk about mysortingalgorithms.java, which you recall, we said you have to do five, Am I counting wrong? Is that four sorts? Have I been saying five? One, two, three, four. I can't count y'all. Um, you only have to do four sorts. See, isn't that so great? I told you you had to do five. And now that I'm telling you have to do four, you're like, oh, this is so awesome. This is so easy. So it's actually all on purpose. Um, but anyway, you have to do these four sorting algorithms. And so my recommended approach is first for every algorithm, refresh yourself on the steps for the algorithm. I really recommend watching the linked videos or reviewing the lecture. And so when I say linked videos at the top of the spec, um, there are a couple like different videos linked that sort of summarize the sorts. Um, and I think it's a good way to just like recap, get it into your brain and remember exactly what you're supposed to be doing. So once you know exactly how the sort works conceptually, write down the steps that need to happen in English, not code. And then you can refine the English to pseudocode and then turn the pseudocode into real code. And I think this approach will work pretty well. We can sort of do an example. And so after reviewing um, the insertion sort of videos provided, I might write up these following like English or like pseudocode steps on how insertion sort should go. So insertion sort, I know we start with an array and then we're Iterating through the array from index zero to the array length minus one. And what we know is that if the current element is greater than the one before it, we should swap it with the one before it. So swap it back. And we'll do the swapping back as many times as necessary until the current element is no longer greater than the one before it, right? And so <clears throat> this is just a written down description of how we said insertion sort works in lecture, but we can turn this into even better pseudocode. And so um, I will leave that to you. You can do that yourself, but we can imagine like, we see some sort of loop right here. And then we also see we should do this as many times as necessary. So maybe that's implying like another sort of loop as necessary or while something needs to happen. And so this is how insertion sort might look in your like first English pseudocode type of like just sort of word dump. And then you can refine this into code and that approach should work pretty well for all the sorts. Um, and so that's what I recommend. Again, those videos linked at the top of the spec are gonna be really helpful. I'm not gonna bother doing a review of these topics because why would I bother when we already have some um, for y'all. So go watch those if you are confused on where to even begin or how the sorts work. 
Now, moving on to the sorting problems part, recall you only have to do one of the four, but it's recommended that you try them all because they're really interesting. And I'll just go over what all four problems are asking. Um, each, prob each of these problems are interesting because if you use sorting or apply like sorting principles, the problems become much easier. So the first one is intervals. In intervals, you're given a list of intervals, or in other words, an array of like two item arrays. And so these intervals, we can imagine define like a range. And so if we had the intervals 11, 12, 15, 19, 3, 5, 13, 6, 2, 8, and 8, 9, on the number line, they might look like something like this, right? And so we see 11, 12 is the interval from 11 to 12 in pink. Whereas, um, let's see, two to seven or two to eight is this interval right here, right? And so your goal is to find out the total length all the intervals span together. But this is not just the same as adding all the element like distance differences up because some of the intervals can overlap, right? And so what we mean by this is just that cal like calculating the um, length span is not just the same as going, oh, two to eight span six, plus three to five spans two, because like we see that together, the two to eight interval actually is sort of like covers all of this and the three to five is not covering any new area or new length. And so we see that just these two intervals together still only cover six, not six plus two, right? And so this is kind of a tricky problem because we can see there is overlap, um, complete overlap. There's also like partial overlap here. And so given this like bunch of intervals, your task is to figure out what is the total length they span. And again, to emphasize, there is some way that we can imagine sorting would maybe help you here. I think looking at the number line visual is actually pretty helpful because you're gonna notice um, in a way, we see a sort of sorting happening of the intervals here when we place them on the line, right? We see that the 15, 19 interval comes last and the two eight interval comes first. And so these are things you can think about. Um, and this is a really fun problem. I had fun thinking about how to do this. The next one is sort ints. And so this one says, given a sequence of n distinct integers um, where each one of them is in the range from zero to n squared minus one, develop a linear time algorithm for sorting them. And so for this, um, I would really just recommend looking at the skeleton file given sortints.java. And what's interesting about this is that you can't use ordinary distribution sort for this because that would require initializing and traversing arrays of size n squared, which would take too long. And so this is sort of a puzzle, um, like um, a little challenge, a trick, um, and it's gonna require some creative thinking for solving this. The next one is inversions. And so this one says, find an algorithm that runs in n log n time for computing the number of inversions in a list of n items. Array elements that are out of order can be corrected by swapping two adjacent elements at a time, each of which counts as a single inversion. And so I think the main thing for this problem is just understanding what an inversion really is. Um, and so I want to go over these couple example lists and see how many inversions do they have. So this list is sorted. And so because it's sorted, we just know there are no inversions, right? Everything is in the correct order. No two items are out of place with each other. So this has zero inversions. Now, what about this reverse sorted list right here? And so it's kind of... Um, we need to think about the fact that like, we don't wanna count an inversion twice, right? We can't say, oh, four is less than one, so that's one inversion. And then also, oh, or sorry, four is before one, so that's an inversion. And also, oh, one is after four, so that's an inversion, because that's looking at the same thing twice. And so the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna say, um, there is the four, three inversion, the four two inversion and the four one inversion. And I'm only gonna compare four to the elements after it just for the sake of counting them, right? Then I'll say, oh, there for three, we're not gonna say, oh, there's a three four inversion because that's the same as the one we just did, right? Like these are the same. 
So I'm going to compare three just to the elements after it. And I see, oh, there is a 3, 2 inversion and a 3, 1 inversion, right? And then I'm going to compare two. And again, I'm not going to say, oh, there's a 2, 3 inversion because we just did that. But I will say, oh, there's a 2, 1 inversion. And finally, 1 um, is the last element. And so that's just how I counted them um, for this. Um, you might have to be a little more clever to reach the runtime requirements. But just so we all understand what an inversion is and how, like what the expected answer is, this has six inversions. And we can do it one more time for this example, just to hammer it in. Um, so we're gonna see the inversions here. We see three is inverted with two. Um, we see six is inverted with five and six is inverted with four. And we see five is inverted with four and we see seven is inverted with four, right? Um, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, and so this one has five inversions. So the last of these four sorting problems you can do is two sum. And so this one says, given two sequences of integers, or in other words, like two arrays, A and B, find an algorithm that runs an n log ed time, where n is the total number of integers in A and B, or the added like total sum of number of elements, that determines for a given parameter m, whether there is some number in A and some number in B such that M equals the sum of those two numbers. And so that might've sounded like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but let's just look at an example. Let's say we're given the arrays A and B, where A is two and three and B is seven, six, four, five. Note that A and B don't have to be the same length. So what Tusum is asking is, if I have these two arrays and I ask for M equals three, I'm asking, is there one element in A and one element in B that add up to three? And so we could look at this and we'd say, is there any element in A plus an element in B that could add up to this? And we're gonna notice that's false, right? Technically notice that we could add like two elements in A, right? Two plus one, but that's not what the problem's asking for. We're asking for exactly one element in B and one element in A. And so this, we would see is false. Um, and so if M was three, we'll get far false. Now, if we had the same input arrays A and B, but now we're asking for M equals seven, this one we're gonna see is true, right? Because we could do three plus four, we could also do two plus five, um, or we could do six plus one. And so it doesn't really matter like which pair we're looking at because we're just looking for a Boolean, right? True or false. So if there's multiple, it doesn't really matter. Um, we're just looking for true or false. Now for M equals 10, we're gonna see, oh, we could do three and seven, right? And so this is true. What about M equals 100? Well, we see right away, there's no way we could add up these like small numbers and get something like 100, right? And so that's false. And so this is again, another really common interview question. Um, I think it's pretty tricky and fun one. And so remember sorting is helpful here. I will leave you that hint um, and consider what happens if I sort um, one or both of the input arrays given, what information can I get from this? Um, and think about meeting this runtime requirement. And that is all the hints I will give you. So this is homework seven. Um, I hope you enjoy doing it and have a good rest of your day.